As you can see, I've been busy today on the Frisco N scale layout. I've got the 5045 from Intermountain and the 5040 now working on DCC. I ended up putting a Digitrax decoder into it and I also mounted an Intermountain frame, which was DC equipped already, into this F7B. I had to narrow the frame up quite a bit to get rid of a terrible screeching noise that I was having uh, due to the fact that that body was a lot tighter and snugger and it caused the uh, gears and everything to uh, make uh, just a terrible amount of noise. This is a Kato unit that I have ready to go. Uh, it's 5017 right now. It's going to be an orange and white uh, F7A and it's going to be uh, number 17 for the Frisco. I had someone else previously put a Digitrax DN 163 or 136 decoder into it. And then I went ahead uh, tonight and I put into this F7A a Digitrax uh, plug and play. It wasn't exactly plug and play. I had to do a little soldering on it. So everything seems to be working great on these two Kato units here and here. Uh, two different ways to put in DCC, but uh, this one was a little bit difficult but now I've got it running like a champ, the F7B. Um, it runs full DCC just like the others and uh, I'm very happy with it. Unfortunately, I'm not very happy with these two Intermountain units, 5050 and 5047. The issue is they have uh, sound and DCC decoders from MRC and MRC is telling me it's my fault because I used an NCE power cab to do all the programming and as soon as I put these two into a consist it would uh, throw them into an infinite loop and they can't be salvaged again unless I buy all the uh, uh, MRC um, uh, DCC controllers which I think is a little bit of crap and they want me to send them back so that they can reprogram them and get them back to me. But based on the issue that I had with these two locomotives here, the 5045 and the 5040, I learned a very important lesson when installing DCC. And that lesson is, is you have to have the engines isolated from the chassis. And it sounds some, like something that's very obvious, but in DC you don't have to and Intermountain does not bother to do that because they're DC locomotives that are allegedly DCC ready. So I suspect that that might be the issue with these. I'm going to try to make that fix and if it doesn't then I'm going to send them off to MRC and let them screw them up as I'm sure MRC can do. Other than that it looks like everything's looking ready to go. We're going to have two orange and white F7A's pretty soon, number 16 and 17, with Kato power underneath. These are DCC lights work and they're ready to go. So I'm kind of excited about the F3's and F7's running around the layout right now. And if you do, give me a comment and let me know what you guys think. So bye for now from the Frisco layout. And man, I sure wish I could go back to these days. Thanks, folks.